Greetings, Python programmers. Alan D. Moore here, author of this book, Python GUI Programming with TK Inter, from Pact Publications, available on Amazon or wherever fine books on GUI programming are sold. In this video, we're going to be talking about menus, main menus in the application. We're going to add a main menu to our diary application, which you see right over there. And I have made a few off-camera changes to this, just some small fixes. Uh, first one is right here. You can see the geometry. I've added plus 300, plus 300. That's just a little convenience. It will position um, the application a little bit closer to the center of the screen so you guys can see it a little better. I don't have to drag it out each time. Uh, the next change I made is in our open file function. So if the user clicked cancel on our open file dialog, uh, it would actually try to open a file with a blank path, which is obviously a little problematic. So what I did here is just a little check to say, if not file path, return from the function. All right, let's talk about menus now. So unlike some of the other widgets we've looked at so far, the menu is a little different. The menu is not actually natively built in TKinter its functionality provided by the operating system or desktop environment you're in that TKinter just wraps around. What this means then is that depending on the platform you're on, so if you're on Mac OS or Windows or a different desktop environment in Linux, your menus have slightly different capabilities and behaviors. Um, we're going to try to avoid all that by sticking to some things that are common in all of them today, but I'm just going to warn you up front, if you're on Mac OS in particular, uh, some things we do may not behave the way you expect them to. Um, I did go into this in great detail in my book, but I no longer have access to a Mac at the moment, so I can't verify that what I'm going to do today will work perfectly on a Mac. Um, if it doesn't, please do make a comment and let us all know. If it does, let us know that as well. All right, so let's create a menu. All right, so I'm going to do this at the bottom of our program, right before main loop. Uh, the reason is that the menu is going to call a lot of functionality, and so I want our functions to already be defined when I create the menu. All right, to get started, we need to create our main menu object, and that is the tk.menu and we need to assign it a parent and that is our root window. So this menu object is going to be where we start building our menu. This is sort of the root menu that you see across the top of an application. Um, to make sure that our root is going to use it, we need to configure our, our root to have its menu argument be set to this menu object. So we're going to say root.configure menu equals menu and that just tells root hey this is your main menu now all right let's go ahead and run this all right and as you can see there's nothing up there there is if you look really close a subtle little line there you might see but there's nothing there because we haven't added anything to our main menu So to add menus to our main menu, we need to just create more menu objects. Um, a traditional one that we might start out with is our file menu. So we're going to say file menu equals tk.menu. And this time we're going to give it a parent of our menu object. And we can then add that to our menu using the menus add cascade. So cascade is TK enter terminology for a submenu basically. This menu is going to be a submenu of the main menu. So on the main menu object we call add cascade and we're going to say label equals file and the menu is file menu. So add cascade takes two keyword arguments label and menu. Alright, 
let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And here we are. Now you can see I've got file and it's empty because <laughs> I haven't added anything to it yet. But now if you're on Mac, this may not be here. This may be up in your global file menu area at the top of the screen. File may have already been there. I don't know. Um, but again, that's one of those things that's just on Mac, that's how it is. All right, let's go ahead and add something to this file menu. Uh, we will say, we'll say file menu, let's just add a quit command. File quit, classic, at least on Windows, classic thing. So we'll say label equals quit. Now for actions on our menu, we need to give it a command, just like we give to a button or any, anything else we click on. So for our command, we're going to use root.destroy. And destroy is the function to just close out a window or get rid of a widget. Root.destroy is going to get rid of our root window and quit the program. Let's give that a try. Right, there's file and as you can see we have a quit and it quits the program. Now I want you to notice something really quick. If we look at this menu you, you may be able to see this on the screen I don't know there's little dashed lines right here. And if I click on that that separates the sub menu from the main menu and I can drag it around the screen. That is called a tear away menu or a tear off menu and it's one of those features I just I don't know that people really want that feature it seems like a kind of an old-fashioned sort of thing I mean there are still modern applications that use that but I like to turn that off because it just kind of is one of those things that makes TK enter look a little dated to me uh, so the way we do that is when we create our menu we can use the keyword tear off equals zero and if I specify that, then this will not be a tear off menu. Let me run that again. And you can see the little lines are gone. I can't tear this menu off. Again, use it if you like, but that's just one of those things to me I like to get rid of. Okay, let's add some more commands to our file menu. So we have an open function. Let's go ahead and see if we can put that on there. We'll say file menu. To do that, we're going to add command, and again, label equals open, and our command is the open file function. We also have a save command, so might as well add that. So we'll say file menu dot add command label equals save command equals save. Uh, we can also add a separator, so like a little line to segment off this submenu. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. We'll say file menu dot add separator. And that doesn't take any arguments. All right, let's run that, check that out. So here's our file menu. You can see we've got open, we've got save, we've got a little separator line right there, and then we've got quit. So if I run open, right here, I'm prompted with my open dialog. And if I prompt save, I should probably put some data in there. Uh, subject today is great. Hobbies, we'll mark it private. And we'll say great day for making videos. All right. Now, instead of clicking Save down here with the button, I'm going to go up here to the File menu and click Save. It's prompting me for a, a password, so it's working. Uh, we'll use Password, the ever-secure password, and it was saved. And if I go to File Open, there it is right there. All right, great. So we can continue doing this and adding more menus. Um, 
And we can add more than just commands and separators. We can actually add a couple different kinds of widget controls. So, for example, we can do a checkbox. So we could move our, our private checkbox from the form up into our menu. Uh, let's create an options menu, maybe. Be a good place to put that. And that's going to be a tk.menu. Parent is menu. Get rid of the tear off. And we'll go ahead and add that to our main menu. Add cascade. Label equals options. Menu equals options menu. All right, so to add a checkbox, um, check button is what it's called in TK. So options menu dot add check button. So this takes two keyword arguments. One is label, of course, and we'll label that private. And then it takes a variable, and that has to be a Boolean var that is going to be set uh, by this check button. So we'll say private var is our variable. All right, let's run that, see how it looks. So now we've got our file menu still and our options menu in private. And if I click that, notice it asks me, do I want to encrypt this message? Because we have that trace on the variable. If I say yes, it has checked both the box in the form. And you can see a little check mark here in the menu. And if I uncheck that, unchecks it everywhere. So you can see that is setting that variable in the background whenever we hit that on the menu. All right, let's just, for completeness here, let's go ahead and add a help menu. Every application should have a help menu, even if it's completely useless. Tear off equals zero. And we will add and about. So help menu to add command label about. And for our command, we're going to do a lambda function. So this is something that may be new to some of you guys, and I see it a lot in GUI programming. Um, when we pass a command, an argument, it needs to be a reference to a function. Well, sometimes we don't have a function written. Now, we could sit here and we could write an about function, and that would be a good thing to do. Um, but sometimes if it's real simple, we can just say lambda. And this is basically going to create an anonymous function right here in this line of code. And I'm going to say for my lambda tkmb that show info, that's message box, remember from our last video. We'll say about. We'll just say my tkinter proper capitalization, diary. All right, and we'll clean up this code a little bit here. Oops, what did I forget, folks? That's right, I need to add cascade. So let's say menu.add cascade. Label equals help, menu equals help menu. Always important to remember, it's just like it's just like packing your widgets, right? You create your widgets with a parent, but you actually need to pack them in there or grid them in there um, to actually get them on the thing. This is essentially add cascade is the menu equivalent of a geometry manager. Um, that's what gets it actually on there. So there we go. We've got help. We've got about, there we go, really useful help. All right, so we showed how you can add a check button. Um, another thing you can do is to add radio buttons. So I thought maybe we could have some radio buttons to adjust the font size. You know, you guys have been probably struggling to see uh, the text that I'm typing into this diary. So 
let's fix that. So first thing we're going to need is a variable. So way up here at the top, I've created a variable, font size. It's an int var with a value of 12. All right. And now we need to write a function. And we'll do it right here at the end of our function list after check file name. We're going to write a function to set the font size using that variable. We'll just call it set font size. Uh, I'm just going to give it a dummy args here because it'll be used on a trace. Um, set size of the text widget font from font size. We're going to say size and we're going to get our variable value size equals font size dot get and then we can configure our message input font equals we'll do an f string tk default and then we'll say size and we'll go ahead and run that when the program starts to make sure that our, our default of 12 is in there all right, and now we need to add a trace, font size dot trace add, right, set font size. You guys remember variable tracing from our previous videos? Again, we just add a trace on that int var so that whenever it's changed, whenever it's written to, we're going to call the set font size function. All right, let me run that real quick and just make sure it doesn't crash or anything. Very good. Of course, we still have a 12 point font there, or 12 pixel font. I'm actually not sure which one that is, and I should know that for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, I'll find that out, maybe leave a comment. Okay, so now we need to be able to change that variable. So let's create this. We'll create a sub menu. We'll call it size menu. And it's going to be a TK menu. And we're going to put it on our option menu. So yes, your sub menus can have sub menus, as you're going to see. You can continue to nest these deeper and deeper. I don't really know the upper limit. I'm sure it gets pretty impractical after two or three. Um, but you can certainly try. I believe I did that experiment once, and it, it got a little weird. OK, so now let's generate some sizes. Oh, it's not option menu, it's options menu. Good. All right, so now let's say for size and range, we'll go from 6 to maybe 32. So we'll say 33, and we'll just do the even ones. So that's range 6, 33, 2. That just means start at 6, end at 33, and go by 2s. And we'll say size menu dot add radio button. And that's all lowercase. Uh, add radio button. Label, we'll just use size for the label. We have to give each one of these a value, just like a radio button in our GUI. Value equals size. And then we'll set the variable to font size. And then outside of that, option menu. We have to add a cascade to add this to the option menu. Menu equals size menu. Label equals font size. All right, so just to review. Oh, and I keep typing option menu. All right, just to review. We've created a variable. We've given it a trace so that whenever that variable is changed, the font size will be set to whatever that variable is. And now we've created a menu with a bunch of radio buttons connected to the variable, each with a value of a number from 6 to 32. Let's run that. Now under options here, you see font size has a little arrow pointing out that shows that there's a cascade coming off that. You can see there's a little dot showing us that 12 is our current value. And we've got 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, all the way up to 32. 
Go ahead and type some text. This is um, text for our message. And then let me go to the options menu and let me change the font size up to 20. And you can see the font growing. Working good. Font size 32. You can shrink it way down to 6. Or all the way up to 32. Now bear in mind this is not going to be saved with your text. This is just a font size for the display. We're just saving plain text. There's no way to save font size, but um, this, is, this is why it's an option, more of a user preference kind of thing. And that's really all there is to menus at a basic um, standpoint. Hopefully those worked across all three platforms. Uh, there are some things you can do on, say, Linux, you can't do on Mac. For example, you can't add a command to your top-level window on Mac. Um, you can actually add images into your menus. Um, that doesn't work on every platform. Um, you know, you can add, like I said, you can keep adding more and more cascades and sub-windows. Sub that may or may not work. To after a certain point on your platform. Um, you'll just have to experiment with your OS and see. Uh, before we go, I tell you what, since we've got this nice menu, let's clean up our app a little bit with some of the redundancies. So we can get rid of our open button here and our save button since those are now in our menu. We can get rid of those command calls. Save button. Let me change something. Oh, we can get rid of our um, our private checkbox. We don't need that anymore. And if we do that, we need to adjust our row config since that changes the row of our text widget. All right, let's run that. Private var. Oh, I <laughs> don't get rid of the private var definition, though. We still need that. Here we go. Much cleaner looking application. We've got file save up here, file open. We've got our options for private. We've got help about. Still got our categories everything else. That's all I've got to share today about menus. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.